Welcome, 4% ladies and 96% gentlemen, to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, I'm going to cover why cheap amplifiers actually kill subs. And I don't mean they don't make as much power as you think they will, so you clip them and they cook subs. I mean the underlying effects. So stick around for a minute here. You might learn something. Now, where did this come from? On a few different occasions with this particular model of amplifier, I have had customers bring me subs to recone that they didn't understand why they cooked the sub. It's a 2000 watt rated amplifier, and uh, sometimes they state what you've possibly seen on an amp dyno, which is a garbage number and you should never go off of. But it should not have been enough to kill their subs. When you have a 2000 watt amp, and uh, allegedly it does that much. And you have two subs that should take a thousand watts of actual power. Uh, I don't even mean rating and then you have impedance rise and you lose power and this, that, and the other and everything else, every other argument. It's two subs that should take a thousand watts on 2000 watt amp, absolutely no problem. And you end up with this. This is what happened to both subs. Now this is from Extreme Heat. Uh, this is not just from clipping. Um, the leads would usually uh, be darkened or burnt uh, if they were clipping it, uh, and the leads on both sides are perfectly fine on both subs, so that indicates that it is not clipping. It's just extreme heat. Uh, on the top side here, it had the most buildup of heat. Uh, down here it was moving in the gap so it could cool a little bit better, but it did split out and separate, and then uh, just roasted up here. So that got me thinking, What's going on here? Uh, I had a few other customers mention the same thing with the same amplifier. So I decided to get this amp from that customer and investigate, and that's what we're gonna show today. Now I've looked at this a little bit to kind of figure out what exactly is going on, and I've seen some very weird things. So first things first, what I'm gonna do is I've got three different tones, uh, 20 hertz, 45 hertz, and 65 hertz. I've also got a sweep uh, that goes from, I think it's 10 to 1,000 over a minute, and we can look at that. But we've got our head unit with those tones in the sweep. We've got an oscilloscope connected so you can see exactly what's happening. And we'll go over the basic settings as well before we turn this on because, believe it or not, it's going to matter. So the way this is connected, we've got... The gain about three quarter, it doesn't really matter for this application. We're not going for maximum power or appropriate. We just wanna make sure we get a fair amount of power with some volume. Low pass filter is all the way up at 250 hertz. Subsonic is down, which indicates off, which you would think would indicate it has no subsonic at all. But we will see if that is valid or not. There's a reason there's 20 hertz on here. So, step one, we're gonna plug RCAs in here so we have signal. Amp has already got power ground remote so we can turn it on and here's the first part that gets interesting. You'll notice our oscilloscope shows zero volts and it has nothing going on. And then we turn the head unit on and suddenly we have a signal with 75 millivolts but you'll notice the volume is at zero. So if we have volume zero, why do we have signal? And uh, why is it offset? And why is the bottom of this wave cut off? We have next to no voltage, but we have a signal coming out somehow, some way. So we're going to go up on volume and you'll see that it's just bouncing around, doing all kinds of crazy. That's still showing 69 millivolts, but so that's volume two, volume three, volume four, and it's doing the same wave. It's just going all kinds of weird. And it's also offset a little bit. You notice that where the middle is, uh, it's actually on the high side a little bit but we keep going up on volume and it keeps just getting weirder. 
you might be able to hear the sub a little bit, but it's still not reading correctly. For whatever reason, I can't seem to get this amp to read correctly if I start from a low volume. We're almost into one volt. We've got 125 millivolts and it's just doing a really weird wave. And you see, it's going absolutely crazy here with seven volts. It straightens out when there's nothing there. Now it sounds like there's an audible clip, but that wave is going absolutely bonkers. So we're going to try another frequency. We're going to try 45 hertz. Something is definitely going weird, just it will not read correctly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the volume down, we're gonna turn it off, turn it back on, and I think it might start reading correctly. So there we go. Now it's actually reading correctly. Seven volts. As soon as I went another click, it went crazy. So this thing is just screwing with my oscilloscope. We'll turn it off and back on again. All right, we're showing 11 volts and it appears to be clean. We'll turn it down. And you might be able to see it starts getting a little bit dirty. I'm gonna zoom in on this so this will uh, make a little bit more sense. We're going to go down on volume. Starts to get a little bit dirtier. And then it seems to clean up a little bit. And now we have a flat spot in the bottom of the wave. This is four volts. So the top of the wave is rounded. The bottom is flattened out. So that's 45 hertz and it seems to be acting until we go up on volume and then it goes nuts again so we're going to turn this off back on because it won't stay reading correctly let's try this again i've never had anything that just made the oscilloscope confused let's go down to 20 hertz. So this is showing 5 volts in the wave is all kinds of crazy. I'm going to see if turning it off, turning it back on will straighten it out. Okay, so we're down to 7 volts. It seems to be okay. And you can see here again, top is rounded, the bottom is flat. Top rounded, bottom flat. Seems to straighten out a little bit there at 20 volts. But it's uh, doing all kinds of weird wave stuff. And no matter what I do, I cannot get it to stay consistent. And this kind of tells me that there's more things going on with the wave because this is auto ranging it's supposed to detect it and then display it but if it's all over the place it can't properly detect it because it's not a clean wave it's not just the sine wave that has a problem being dirty there's other harmonics and other things happening there so i've now disconnected the sub so you can see exactly what this is putting out with no change in impedance from the sub being connected uh, no one ohm resistance uh, on here anything like that and again, we're at volume zero and somehow 
we have something coming out of it. Staying at the 20 hertz, we're gonna go up in volume and you immediately see it goes crazy. And it just goes a little nuts. So I'm gonna turn it on with quite a bit more voltage. I'm gonna go up to volume 25 and turn it on. And it's still going nuts. Let's try volume 28. Again, this is auto ranging. It should automatically detect the sine wave and make all of the adjustments for the display appropriately. Turn that off, turn that back on, and it just will not do it at 20 hertz. And remember the subsonic is set to off. So, won't do it there. Let's go down to volume 17. We go up to 45 hertz. And if we turn it all the way up to 40 volts, it suddenly can find it. And it seems to be okay if we back it down. But if you notice, the top is flattened out, the bottom is not. We'll go down on volume, and there are points where it seems to clear up a little bit, but the top is still flat, the bottom is round. And as we go down, it seems to straighten out. But we're gonna go up to the point where it's definitely hard clipping and see what happens. That's definitely a hard clip. As you can see up here, uh, the bottom is just barely out of display, but it doesn't seem to be clipped. It's just the top of the wave. And then here we've got the bottom of the wave clipped and the top is not. So it's not exactly a clean signal and it's, it's not just full blown flat edges until you get to this point then it absolutely is. So 20 hertz that was supposed to not have a filter at all, uh, it, it won't even register on the oscilloscope. 45 seems to be okay. 65. Once we get the volume way up to 37 volts, it will finally lock on and show what it's supposed to show. And there is a full clip for sure. We can see it on top. And then it seems to be okay. And as we bring it down, it still seems to be okay. So different frequencies are doing different things. This one, the top is clipped, the bottom is not. It's at 26 volts. And at 21 volts, it looks like the top is not, the bottom is. And below that, it seems to be clean. Uh, this one, I could be mistaken, but the wave looks a little bit misshapen. And it seems to be okay around six volts. So it, it's very, very weird. Different frequencies are doing different things. Different parts of the wave are cut off. Uh, parts where it just, it will not auto range for any reason. I've never had that on any amplifier that I've ever had on my oscilloscope. Uh, the smallest amount of voltage you can put into it and it finds it just fine and you don't have to go way, way, way up for it to find it and then back it down after it seems to lock on. It's just very, very weird. Uh, but all of these anomalies in the wave, particularly the flat spots on the top or bottom, is what's slowly going to build up heat in the coil and essentially kill it. That's why you end up roasting these subs with dirty signal. If you've got various harmonics, uh, which better test equipment than I've got could, could tell you that, but if you have various harmonics at a much higher frequency that's sending energy into the coil, 
that is not being used and it's just generating heat, kind of like what clipping does. So while this may seem appealing because it's cheap and it allegedly does power and the only thing you're looking at is a cost per watt, which if you check this video, you will find that that is not the case, even in SPL, but it can also affect the sound quality. And being a sub, you may not necessarily hear it because it's tucked away in your trunk or your cargo area or something like that. But even on the bench here, I could tell this did not sound normal. It did not sound good. This is a very, very clean sub and it didn't sound right on the same, just sitting here on the bench. So I can't say if all RP uh, line of amplifiers are, uh, are going to do this, uh, but I can tell you that the RP2000 does it because on I think three different occurrences, somebody has had the amp and brought me cooked subs. They changed amps, no problem. They even went to amps with more power and had no problem. So in the grand scheme of things, your cheap amp ends up being much more expensive when you have to either buy new subs or recone the subs that you have. If you learned something, make sure you give us a thumbs up, and if you aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you get notifications when you hit the bell as well on all of our new Tech Stuff Tuesday videos, as well as any of our other uploads, like new product releases and product information. Make sure you shop emfcaraudio.com for all of your car audio needs and get on our Low Baller Revision 1 Banhammer V2 and maybe even a YOLO V2 pre-order. There's also a link below to our Facebook and Instagram as well as a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel that way. If you have any questions about what you've seen here, comment that below and I'll answer that as best I can. If you have any ideas for a future Tech Stuff Tuesday, comment that below. A lot of these videos come from your ideas. Now we'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.